Good morning and happy Monday. Welcome back to another episode of Monday Coffee with the Doll. I am your hostess, the Doll. I sure you all know that by now but in case you're new here and you don't know that my name is Emily Dahl welcome to Monday Coffee with the Doll, where we talk about just about anything everything emotional real life we get in touch with our feels um, and we probably overshare a lot but I feel like that's that's what the internet is for these days so technically we're right on board with everybody else I have to admit, you guys, I'm not happy with myself this week. I'm not happy with my performance this week. I'm not happy with um, what I got accomplished last week. Nothing. And um, I'm really being hard on myself, I have to be honest. I did not get anything done last week. I let all of my emotions, all of my what I was feeling, I let my exhaustion, I let my anxiety, I let all of it get the best of me, and in turn, do you know what I did? Nothing productive. I openly talk about having um, anxiety and depression on my show, if you're new here. Just so you know, welcome, if that's something that you share. Um, <laughs> make yourself at home. and. Being pregnant, which I also just released talking about and announced on um, my last episode of Monday Coffee with the Dog, kind of brings on so many new things when you have anxiety and depression. And I want to do a video on it because I think that that would be a really good thing to talk about and open up with um, and, and kind of discuss what anxiety and depression, along with being pregnant, kind of <laughs> is doing for me. I, uh, I didn't have anxiety and depression as bad as I do now when I had my first two kids when I was younger. So it's a new battlefield. It's, it's new um, things that I'm dealing with, especially since everything that I did for my depression, I'm not I like to handle it and, and, and to you know help it and assist it and all the things that I took and the supplements and things like that. I can't take right now because I'm pregnant. <laughs> and um, so it's been difficult going through like, the stage of all of that coming out of my system then going through like all of the things not having it and then dealing with heightened things because you know i mean being pregnant changes your entire dynamic as a human being so it's been a weird new roller coaster that uh, i didn't necessarily prepare to, <laughs> to be on and it's kicked my butt this week a hundred percent and i'm really disappointed in myself and i'm trying not to be hard on on myself but that seems to be what I'm the best at is being hard on myself I, I really struggle with already not feeling like I do enough I achieve enough I'm good enough I'm whatever enough you know you want to throw in there that's how I feel and every time I'm not actively doing something when it comes to my work, I feel like I'm slacking and I'm not doing good enough and I'm not putting out enough content or I'm not putting out the type of content I need to and I just feel like I'm always nagging at myself to do more, do better, why aren't you doing this, why aren't you doing that? And I think that I talked to um, one of my really good friends who is actually the owner of Forever Above Me who makes my Monday Coffee with the Doll coffee cups. Um, we were kind of talking about dealing with depression and anxiety while you're also trying to run this a social media brand um and a company and because he has he does way more in different things than i do i don't he has an entire you know clothing line and he's got all of these projects that he's doing and he, and he collabs with a lot of people so like i can't even imagine dealing with that many people on a daily basis that he, <laughs> he deals with so mad props to him um, but we were kind of discussing how, you know, when you already struggle with anxiety and depression and when like two of your main side effects of those are are just being coming a recluse and withdrawing and hiding from the world and hiding from everybody and I 100% am guilty of doing that. I just disappear. Um, and you can't do that when you have such a like when you're creating such a brand on social media because social media is such a huge aspect in our lives and you know you feel that pressure of trying to keep up with so many other different content creators or brands that are that are you know similar to yours and and you always feel like this crazy pressure that you have to keep up with and and then when you go through these bouts of depression and anxiety that make you just want to hide and you can't function and you 
you know, you try to push yourself through it, but we all know that doesn't always work. And um, so it's a lot on top of a lot already. And the way I kind of look at that is that I think that, you know, social media is such in the forefront of our lives. Like we focus so much on that being taken care of first outside of everything else that I think a lot of things get neglected and a lot of things don't get the attention that they need. And that really causes a lot of problems for, you know, just in general in your life. When I'm having like super high anxiety about not getting done the things that I, I feel like I need to stay on top of because of my depression. Um, I try to remember that social media isn't everything. It really isn't. And it's okay to take those moments. It's okay to be like, you know what, I can't give my best right now. So I need to work on getting to my best point. So then in that moment, I can focus on all of these things that I seem to really struggle with when I'm going through these moments of of my, you know, flare-ups of anxiety or depression or whatever it is you're dealing with. And, you know, we immediately feel like that has to be what we pay attention to. Like, we wake up and that's what we check first. We go through something depressing or horrible or amazing or just mediocre. I mean, we're just eating lunch. And the first thing that we do is we're like, we have to put this on social media. We have to capture it. We have to take a picture of it. We have to share it. We have to document it. We have to note it. And I think that really takes over, um, you know, just your mental state. So one of the things that I've been trying to really focus on is not being hard on myself when I step away for a few days because I really do have to step away for a few days um, when I'm having my low, low points. And I used to take a lot of CBD products and I used to take... Um, a lot. I, I take Kratom, I take CBD, and those are the things that I use for my depression and my anxiety. And I found this balance of natural supplements and, and natural things that help me with the things that I struggle with. And that took a really long time, of course, to figure out um, once you figure out you even have anxiety and depression. Um, for me, everybody thought I had um, asthma, <laughs> but they were just panic attacks, no big deal. But I think that, you know, once you figure out what it is that you have and you can treat it, I was on prescription medication as well and it, and it didn't help me. Um, so I wanted to try something better. I wanted to try something that affected me more. And I started looking into more natural things as personally, Kratom was a huge life changer for me, 100%. Now, Kratom is something that you really need to do your research on and you need to look into entirely before it's something that you add into your system and into your, you know, routine. Always do your research on everything, but Kratom is something that I would recommend you really looking into and really deciding on if it's something that you want to add to what you do to help your depression and your anxiety because I'm not alone in this. Um, there's people all over the world that are using it and it's changing their lives. Are there a small handful of people here or there that it doesn't help or they react to not positively and it's something that they just can't use? 100%, just like anything else. Um, my kids can't take amoxicillin. Go figure, the most generic medication ever from the doctor um, that ev most other people can take, but not my kids. So you know, just like anything else, you need to do your research on it and you need to learn about it, but Kratom was a game changer for me. But there's not enough research on Kratom and pregnancies, so 100% I was just like, we're not taking this. We don't even remotely know if it's safe. There hasn't been any studies on it. I'm not going to put something into my body that I do not have any type of medical documentation or proof that it won't harm my little tiny baby doll growing inside of my body. <laughs> but um, it's been a feat. It's been a feat really getting past you know, not being able to take the things that helped me. Um, a lot of doctors don't approve of CBD products when you're pregnant, which I personally don't agree with. I am not a fan of putting a whole bunch of pharmaceutical drugs into my baby system, but natural things like CBD have this stigma, so it's looked kind of poorly on by a lot of doctors. So you have a lot of these different struggles. And so I just stopped altogether and it's been really difficult. <laughs> it's been 
hard because not only does your body go through the detox and the transition from not being able to use the things that it's been relying on that kind of balance it out and keep you level and keep you me stress free and anxiety free and depression free you know your body's going through getting all of that out of its system on top of not being able to take it on top of getting all of this stuff back and it's been it's been hard but the way that I look at it is is kind of the way that I look at a lot of things when I'm struggling with them with my anxiety and my depression and that is that it's only a moment it's not forever this isn't indefinite it's a moment and it's something that is gonna you know push me and it's gonna be hard and I'm gonna have ups and downs and I just accepted that immediately like I'm going to go through things that are gonna be difficult that I'm not gonna like that I'm gonna feel lost and angry and uncomfortable and sad and depressed and dark and broken and all of these negative things that having these you know mental illnesses cause you but I'm trying really hard to focus that they're temporary and that it's something that I'm doing to make sure that we have the healthiest most perfect baby that we can have and that's enough for me <laughs> really I mean it's it's what uh, it's what I'm gonna do because it's my job as a, as a human maker of sorts and uh, that's what I'm focused on so I am having hard hard days I am having weeks where I'm really hard on myself because I know that I'm letting it affect my my content creating or or my work and it's hard to get through it's hard not to be hard on yourself I feel like I've said hard way too many times so yeah I think that you know just like anything else life is always gonna put you through different things and it's gonna test you and it's gonna make you uncomfortable and you're gonna have to deal with a lot of different ups and downs and that's what I'm dealing with in regards to just kind of dealing with my anxiety and my depression by myself um, one thing I know that I don't want to do is I do not want to get back on prescription medications for it which my doctors immediately were like take all the pills just take them all and I was like no thank you um, I'm gonna pass I don't I don't understand that mentality of putting man-made drugs into your unborn child but natural things they told me not to not to take um, but to each their own everybody I do a lot of research on that stuff um, and I 100% like apply it to me personally and for everybody else out there I tell them all the same thing you know you know your body you need to research the things that you're doing you need to make sure you have all the information all the facts um, stay away from the fake garbage that people put out there that's just a lot of nonsense that's not factual or true or science-based or anything like that so you just really have to look at everything and make a choice and for me I chose not to do prescription medication while I was pregnant because it just it's not for me it's not for me um, I don't want to put it into my baby um, my fiance a hundred percent supports me on all of these uh, ideas and and what we've decided to do for our baby because it's our baby so we talked about it like we talk about everything else and um, that's what we decided and we've had some rough days and he's very patient with my roller coaster of emotions and I'm very very blessed to have somebody that's so supportive in not only the human growing part that causes issues for you already but then somebody who is just so patient and understanding of my mental state all the time um, and sometimes I don't deserve <laughs> being that patient because sometimes I can be really really mean but yeah I think that you know you have to really give yourself that time give yourself that time where you know you are having bad days and this is what I was talking to with my friend you know you gotta allow yourself to have those bad days and in those times just work on yourself Stop putting the pressure on yourself that you're letting other people down because you may not be keeping up with or doing the exact same things that you normally do. Don't even let that, don't even let that bother you. What you need to focus on is taking care of you and your mental health through those, you know, harder days so that when you get to your good days, you can really celebrate them and you can really enjoy them. And then you can put all your best energies and ideas and thoughts into creating 
new content if that's even what you do or um you know knocking out a project that you've been wanting to do or going on that adventure that you and your friends have talked about you know give yourself those bad days so you can make sure that when you reach the good days you you're in your best state because you took care of yourself it's okay to take moments and i say that all the time and i think a lot of people think that they can't take those moments because we're constantly one of the things with anxiety is that you panic <laughs> you panic over a lot of different things and i panic that people are going to be upset with me or my followers are going to be disappointed because i haven't posted a picture on my instagram in two days or and i think that that type of stuff is so tiny in the scope of what you're really achieving and what you're really working on and that's just taking care of you and if you don't stop to do that then i think that's when it kind of becomes longer distances of reaching your good days and i think that if we stop looking at bad days as like the, the biggest thing that matters and we just start realizing that it's okay it's okay to take those moments and it's okay to have those days and in those days just just write them out and and cater to what you need and then when you get to the good day you can handle all the things that you need to handle and I know for me that's something that I really try to focus on and it helps me in some ways it's not always easy it doesn't always work it's not always like this perfect thing but it's something that I work on all the time and I'm always trying to keep in the forefront of my mind so when I do hit those good days, I can make like all kinds of content. I can get all kinds of things done that I need to get done and everything's okay. Nothing always has to happen like right then and right there. If you need a moment, take a moment. Take a damn moment. So for the past two, I think it's the past two episodes, I talked to you guys about how I wanted to use Monday Coffee as a platform for all of my followers and viewers who enjoy this show and enjoy the topics that I talk about, which are, are very common, I think, are very relatable. I share about just life and things that we go through and I talk openly about it. I talk how it's affected me. Um, and it seems to be really beneficial to you guys. This is probably one of the projects that I've done that's had the best feedback and that's been the longest, re other than doing pinup photos, <laughs> which everybody just loves because pinups are awesome. But um, Monday Coffee kind of always started out as something where I just openly shared about my life and about the things that I go through. Um, and it's kind of helped you guys also not feel so alone if you share some of those situations. So I thought that it would be really fun if I opened up the platform to allow you guys to kind of write in and talk about things that you're going through and ask, I guess, my opinion on it. Um, I really don't think highly enough of myself to think that I am capable or in a position to give anybody advice <laughs> or an opinion, um, but I'm always here to try and give a perspective and just look at a situation and tell you, you know, from what you say to me, how I see it or how I perceive it. And that's something that I do a lot of that I don't talk too much about really um, because they're usually pretty personal messages. One of the things that I spend a lot of time doing on my platforms is just interacting with my fan base after I've shared something. You guys send me a lot of emails and a lot of messages opening up about things that you're either going through, things that you relate to that I've talked about I have women who will contact me one time and then years later contact me again and be like remember that time we talked about this well this is where I'm at now and this is how it helped me and it's years later so I thought why not open that up a little bit wider and just invite you guys to get involved and invite you guys to write into Monday coffee so you guys have I have two emails from two amazing doll fan members who have written in. Um, I'm going to keep these pretty, I think, you know, I'm not going to share photos. I'm not going to share full names or where people are from because I think that everybody deserves to be able to just openly speak about something they're going through without having people feel like they need to harass or attack them, depending on what the topic may be in each message. Um, so I'll probably just do first name basis. but. We are going to do that for the first time, so get ready. Yeah. 
So if you guys um, want to participate in writing into Monday Coffee with the Doll and asking for my opinion or my advice on a situation or tell me about something that you may be going through that you need support in, um, whatever it is, if you want to write into the show and have me answer you basically through video directly to you, um, feel free to send whatever message, situation, question. Um, you can send it on over to my, I have a whole little email set up, Doll Talks blog. It'll be below. You guys can um, write in and then we'll talk it out together because I love your face. So this is coming from um, one of my doll fan members. I believe he might be one of my um, official doll fam squad subscribers, if it's the same one, not 100% sure. But he signed it Alderoth, so that's who um, I'm going to reference that's okay but that's what he signed it at the bottom of the email um, and like I said I want to kind of protect people's privacy because it's scary reaching out and talking to anybody period much less somebody who's gonna read it out loud on video on YouTube um, but it says hi I used to have a lot of toxic male traits it took years for me to realize what I was doing to women and people in general and it's taken a couple of years to get where I am today I feel like since I've realized all that I've done, that I don't deserve to be in a relationship or a good one. I often find myself on the verge of settling with someone that isn't good for me because I feel like I deserve it for how I was. It affects my confidence in general and it has made my socialization skills with anyone I find attractive absolutely zero. Is this the penance I deserve or is there a way to recognize what I was and move on? If so, how? I think I think that one thing that we we need to realize is that we a hundred percent even if we don't want to recognize it or we don't want to admit it or we don't know how we got there that we we can be assholes I know I can be I know that you know reflecting back on how I've treated people in the past or situations I've gone through I can I can go girl <laughs> you've you know you didn't handle that right or you were terrible or you were ugly or you were this or you were that and I think that's I mean we're human right so there's a hundred percent the opportunity for all of us to be shitty humans and you really have to strive to step outside that. And I think that when it comes to relationships, relationships are really hard in general. And I think one of the things that you need to focus on the most in, in what you said is that you're acknowledging your past behaviors and that they were negative. You're already saying, man, what was I doing? And that's huge, especially when it comes to relationships. I think a lot of people who bring negative things into relationships the reason why those things can't be fixed is because the person bringing it in refuses to acknowledge that they're the problem, right? In relationships, most of the time people just project and they're so quick to, instead of listening to maybe negative behaviors that they bring into a relationship, they're super quick to just defend themselves and why they do that or why it's okay for them to do that. Um, and behaving that way I think is, is kind of typical for a lot of people. I think it's like this fight or flight response that when you know the person that they're with calls them on their bullshit, instead of listening and going, even if you don't understand it, even if you don't see it, because that's okay. We don't always see what we're doing. We don't always agree or understand, but to take that time to be, this is how even though I don't understand how it how it is or how they see this, you need to respect that this is what they're telling you. And I think that a lot of people just immediately like defend and say, well, you're doing this, or this is why I do that, or this is why it's okay for me to do that, or this is why you need to get over that. They need to go, huh, I didn't realize, and I still don't, I don't see that. But now that you're calling it to my attention, I apologize for making you feel that way because it wasn't my intention 
and now it's something that I need to pay attention for to see if I can pinpoint it so it's something that I can work on because naturally you don't want to bring negative things into your relationship right you don't want to make your partner hurt you don't want to do things that hurt them or upset them or that are unfair or negative negative. and the fact that you can say I know that I was this way and I know that I treated women terrible I brought all this negativity into my relationships whether they be with a girl or you mentioned I don't know whatever your sexual preference is I don't really give a fuck but whoever it is whether it be friendships whether it be family you know the fact that you're willing to say I was the one that messed up and I was the one at fault and now I want to move on and I want to do better but I feel like I'm still in this spot where I'm holding myself accountable for it it's huge so I want to I want to condone you for that I want to say round of applause my friend for acknowledging where you've gone wrong the hard part I think especially when it comes to relationship issues and you specifically talk about you know people you're attractive to and how that messes with your confidence and I think the problem is is that maybe you haven't 100% forgiven yourself I think that sometimes when we live a certain way for a really long time um, we fear that we haven't progressed past it especially if it's a negative thing so I mean I know I've gone through phases in my life where I'll look back and I'll be like Ooh, am I still that way like when I go through situations I'll ask people who are really close to me this is what's going on this is how I feel about it am I crazy am I wrong I need honesty I need 100% to know because I need to know where I need to reflect and I think maybe in your case I think that you're allowing your past faults to dictate your your positive growth in the future. It's almost like you're reprimanding yourself maybe because you haven't forgiven yourself for some things that you've done to other people. And if that's the case, you can't do that to yourself. You can't. Here's, here's the deal. And I'll be blunt, because I'm a blunt person. <laughs> If you mess up and if you hurt people and you live ways that are toxic for other human beings, the fact that you can even claim that as your own behavior shows that you're way better of a person than, than you even were then, right? You're holding yourself accountable and people don't do that anymore. People don't ever want to self-reflect. They just want to project as to why other people are the cause for their behavior. And you're not doing that. You're saying, I messed up. I treated people horribly. I didn't respect. I didn't value. I was bad. It was me. It's on me. Forgive yourself. You need to forgive yourself. You need to forgive yourself because you are doing absolutely nothing for you or anybody else. Even if like you were to ask the people who hurt in the past, like you're not benefiting them by not allowing yourself to progress in positive ways. All you're doing is keeping yourself in this little negative whirlpool. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that it's a mental thing that you have to retrain yourself. And as soon as something goes wrong, you automatically attach it to well, I don't deserve it because I was this way. No, you wouldn't deserve it if you were still that way. But like you said, you've very clearly acknowledged what you were doing wrong and how you were wrong and, and the behaviors that you were doing were wrong. And you need to forgive yourself for it. You need to forgive yourself for it because here's the thing. What you did is a lesson. You treated people like shit. You didn't value them. You destroyed every relationship maybe that you had with, with your behavior and you hurt people. You need to forgive yourself and move forward. That is a lesson. That is a phase that you went through in your life that wasn't the best kind. And I, I think that sometimes we struggle with forgiving ourselves because we feel like there is no after, right? Well, there is an after and everybody deserves an after. And if you truly understand how you were then and why it was wrong, there's no reason for you to hold that against yourself. You're striving to do better. You're striving to do better, not just for you, so you can find somebody who benefits your life positively, that you can share everything with, that you can connect with, 
But now what you're saying is you want to do better and you want to give all of those beautiful things back to somebody, right? And you can't, I can't condemn you for that. I can't condemn you for saying I was an asshole and I know that and now I want to do better. And I think that's kind of like the world that we live in. It's like there is no after. Well, you fucked up. It's like that cancel culture bullshit. Oh, you messed up. Sorry, you did this one time when you were 17 years old or you said this one thing when you were 20 or you did this one thing to this one person. That's life. We always have the ability to make bad decisions and to treat people bad, 100%. The thing that matters is that we choose not to. And you're making an active choice to not be that way anymore. Why? Because it's clearly not who you are anymore. You know what you did was wrong. Forgive yourself and move on. Let it go. I've brought in so much bullshit from my past relationship. I, and still, my fiance deals with a lot of damage that was put in me from somebody else. And I don't really see that any different. The only difference is, is that you were the one that damaged yourself. You made active choices to be and act in ways that were toxic, right? But you're acknowledging them and you know they're wrong and all you can do is do better. We waste so much time just like living in the negative and feeling like we can't let it go and get past it. But we 100% have every choice to do that just like we have the choice to not progress. You can either live in the negativity that you used to put out or you can say, I made bad mistakes and boy did I learn from them. I learned that this is not how you treat people. I learned that this is gross behavior. I learned that this is hurtful. I learned that it destroys other people. I learned that it destroys me. This is not what I want. This is not the person I want to be. And you have every right to change, be given that opportunity to change and be given that opportunity to just start fresh. But you can't do that if you don't give yourself that, that opportunity. You know what I mean? Like any girl in the world who doesn't know about your past relationships isn't going to automatically be like, this guy, I bet he used to make really poor decisions in his relationships. So I'm just going to write him off now. Because even though he's changed, even though he's at a different spot in his life, even though he completely sees things totally different than he used to, and he's going to do them differently, I'm just going to focus on all of that. You're doing the same thing to yourself. And there's nobody in the world that's going to do that if they have no idea. You're walking into fresh relationships. You're walking into new friendships. You're walking into new relationships. And you need to let go of holding yourself in a spot that you don't live in anymore. Does that make sense? Why? There's no point in staying there. That's not who you are anymore. So forgive yourself. Forgive yourself and move on. Because you deserve happiness, you deserve love, you deserve companionship. We can't automatically say that because people made bad choices once, that they're not allowed to progress from those. They're not allowed to grow and change and learn. It's kind of like, for instance, all of the things historically wise that people are offended by now, right? Because they're horrible things. They're gross, they're disgusting. They're things that happened in the past that, you know, we can all say this is terrible. This is terrible that it happened. It should have never happened. Oh my God. But it happened, right? It happened and it's in the past and we have two choices. We can either stay in the past, which in my opinion is pointless because it's not happening anymore, or we can move forward into the future and make new choices based off of the ones we know we shouldn't make again. And that's what I think you need to do. I think that finding somebody compatible in today's world is really difficult in general. 
and I think that a lot of us automatically assume that it's just us and why can't we find somebody or what did I do wrong or am I am, is this you know like you said penance for the the bad choices I made before you know what I think that it's just hard <laughs> I think that it's really hard to find somebody and to open up and connect and build or even open the door to building something like that with another person. It's scary. There's a lot of things that you're not going to be sure of. You're not going to know until they happen. Could something bad go wrong? Yeah. I mean, of course. Could something amazing go wrong? Yeah, of course. But you can't like deny yourself the possibilities because you've made bad choices in the past acknowledge your bad choices and move the fuck on you deserve to be happy too you deserve to find somebody too and you have stated you've done a lot of growing i know i fucked up in the past i know i made bad choices i know i treated people really bad and i know that it's wrong and i want to change and i want to do better what more can you ask? What more can you ask? That's a huge step for a human being, especially in today's world. How many people are willing to own and accept that they were the problem at some point? I mean, a lot of people who refuse. <laughs> I don't mean a lot of people who are just willing to be like, I was the problem. I can do better. Do better. You deserve that. You deserve that it's not you it's not you anymore so stop putting yourself in the negative boat like that you're the problem it's not you anymore because that's not who you are anymore is that who you are anymore no you want to do better you know you were wrong then that's not you anymore move on don't let yourself put you in a box that you shouldn't let other people put you in if you did something and you were like Emily I made a mistake, I did everything that I could, I apologized, I changed, I did everything I could to fix it, I, you know, but this person refuses to let me move on. Okay, well then, that person needs to fuck off. <laughs> like, I would say it if a person was treating you that way, so don't treat yourself that way. So, know that I love your face, and know that I'm rooting for you, and know that I personally think that it's huge that you're acknowledging where you've messed up in the past and that you want to do better in the future but you're struggling because I think you're holding yourself to a standard more than you should because you're not there anymore. You were down here but now you're up here. It's okay to move on to up there. It's okay to be proud of yourself. It's okay to forgive yourself. It's okay to now go after good beautiful things because you now want to take care of and love and cherish and value those beautiful things like you were always supposed to, but you just hadn't been able to comprehend yet. So I think you need to forgive you and you need to start moving on in more positive ways of how you look at yourself. And when you forgive yourself and you go out there thinking I'm open. I'm open to love and I want to be kind and I want to cherish and, and value and accept and embrace and just praise the beautiful things that are positive in relationships. You, there's no reason why you should be hard on yourself, dude. You're going into it wanting to do the right thing. You're okay. <laughs> You're all right. You're doing good. <laughs> I, I love you. It's okay. We're all assholes sometimes but you've grown. It's not who you are anymore. So don't live in, in that old person. Because you're new and you're beautiful. And I love your face. So that concludes my advice for um, my first ride into Monday coffee. I do have one more um, and I will save that for next time because I think I've probably been talking way more than I should. Um, but next Monday coffee, I'm going to be reading a email from Courtney. I'm not gonna say her last name. Courtney, you know who you are if you're watching. Um, next Monday Coffee, I'm gonna be answering your email. If you guys wanna write into the show, again, you can find the info down below. But to my first write-in, I hope that you know that 
forgiveness is more than saying sorry. <laughs> forgiveness is more than saying sorry. And you've done that. You've done that. You've acknowledged. It's time for you to move on to more beautiful things and accept the fact that you deserve those beautiful things. I think you deserve them. I'm cheering for you. And now a word from our sponsors. So as always, um, some big supporters of Monday Coffee with the Doll, who I absolutely adore and love and I'm so grateful for their constant cheering me on in what I do, um, is of course our forever amazing, forever above me family. They are an amazing platform and brand that supports and encourages all of the positive things that influence your life and make you who you are. They are the official creator of the Monday Coffee with the Doll Mug of Positivity. So if you guys want to get one of those, you can check out the link below. Uh, make sure that if you do get one to support the show, make sure that you put it on um, your Instagram or your Facebook or whatever and, and tag, tag us, give us the, uh, the hashtag Monday coffee with the doll, MCWTD, and I'll see it and I'll share it and tell you how much I love your face because supporting content creators like me, supporting brands like Forever Above Me is a huge, huge deal. Um, your love and your just hanging out with us, sharing our content, being a part of our families online is huge and know that your involvement is probably the most important, is in my opinion, I don't know if everybody would agree with me, your guys' interaction, your guys' involvement, your guys' support is the main thing that matters in doing what we do. So make sure to check out Forever Above Me. You can find their links below. Get yourself a Monday coffee with it all mug of positivity and start that week out right. Uh, our second sponsor who is just absolutely amazing um, would be NC Fizzy Treats. You can get your very own vintage dollies bath bomb from ncfizzytrees.com. It is jam-packed with amazingness for your body, including 60 milligrams of CBD that you can just waft and bathe in. That is absolutely amazing. It relieves aches and pains throughout your body, but it's also just extremely beneficial to your skin. Um, I try to use anything with CBD in it, like if I can replace NC Fizzy Treat, Snicky is an amazing place to get a lot of info on where to get good like CBD supplements and products. Not to mention if you guys want the best bath bombs and bath and body care in the world, definitely check her out. I just got through one of her new creations, which was a whipped body butter and it has CBD in it and I've been using it on my baby bump instead of Palmer's. And I haven't seen any new stretch marks, but the really great thing about it is, is that because it has the CBD in it, when I'm having like the round ligament pain that pregnant women go through, I know, gross, right? Uh, it's definitely been beneficial and it helps with all of that. So I highly recommend checking her out if you guys want the best in CBD bath and body care, all natural, Levy Devi. She can also make special products. She makes products for my fiance who's allergic to all kinds of stuff. She makes epic bath bombs without CBD for my kiddos. They absolutely love it. She also makes lots of beard care for the guys. So check her out. You don't want to miss out on that. So today's um, Monday Coffee Kisser, because I always talk about the lipstick that I'm wearing, is by our iHeart Revolution. Um, I bought it online. Ugh, I'm so bad at this this I bought it online you can buy it at Ulta too and it is there it's like a, a sparkle matte you can see the reflect it's got glitter in it I'm wearing the shade nebula it's kind of a corally orangey but it, it dries down really great I love the glitter fleck in it it stays in place really well I don't really have any complaints I don't think they have that many colors in the glitter just yet but I did love it because it had glitter in it but this is the shade nebula I have absolutely nothing on my coffee cup the staying power is pretty great it's really comfortable um, and again I'm a big fan of the glitter so I heart revolution beauty is one of those kind of cheaper gem brands where you can get a lot of really great products for cheaper prices and again you can get it on mine 
I think they have, I think it's mainly, there's another brand that's really similar. It's like Revolution London, I think. So make sure you look up iHeart Revolution Cosmetics and this is the one that you can also buy at Ulta. So they have a lot of really great highlighters and things like that, but I am wearing one of their glitter lip matte lipsticks in Nebula. Bah. So I think that's gonna be it for today's show. Um, thank you for writing in my, my first write-in. I know that you probably feel really discouraged right now and you feel like you're just kinda in this place where you're not progressing and you feel like it's your fault. So, and it's not something that you can easily talk to other people about or just open up about without people judging you. And I don't really know you, I don't know your life, I don't know every aspect. But just from what you said, I have a lot of hope for you. I think that you really need to work on seeing yourself more positively than you do. Because I think that you have a lot to offer and I think the fact that you're willing to acknowledge that you were wrong and you were the one at fault is such a big deal in today's world and I think you should be proud of yourself for that. That takes a lot of, I mean you have to really accept something about yourself if it's negative, to be able to say I was the problem. And that's huge. And I don't think that that should go unapplauded. And I want you to know that I think that that's a huge deal. I think that you've gotten over the biggest hurdle in moving on from something like this. And that's just acknowledging that you need to do some growth and you need to do some new self-discovery. And I think that you need to start accepting that you're not that person anymore and you deserve beautiful things. And I think that once you acknowledge that's not who you are and we all go through different stages and we all grow differently and we all go through these different things that we're not going to stay in forever don't hold yourself accountable for them forever acknowledge you were wrong ask people for forgiveness if you've hurt them you know validate the pain that you've caused for other people if you've caused it but also forgive yourself because what's the point of changing if you're just gonna force yourself to live in a way that you've changed you that's not who you are so um i hope that i've i've helped if you do have any more questions or if um you want to elaborate feel free to um send me another email my inbox is always open i'm always here to continue the, the conversation if you guys have any valuable information or advice or I don't know if you've gone through something similar feel free to leave our write-in a comment below let them know you know what you think of the situation give them some support give them some some confirmation cheer them on that's what the doll fam is about that's what we're here for we're here to not judge we're here to look at facts and reality we're here to accept and acknowledge and and get past it and get on to better things because i think everybody has the right and the opportunity to move on to bigger beautiful better things because that's what everybody deserves mm -hmm. and sometimes we just we have to do self-reflection before we can reach that and i think that's what you're going through i don't think it's going to be forever so just hold on it's just you're going through a transition <laughs> of of an entire state of mind so don't be too hard on yourself root for it so i'm going to be going into this week finishing off my looks for my pride collection i've done red orange and yellow i'm going to be doing green blue and purple hopefully i can get them all done this week i don't know if i can um, i'm going to try to get another episode of daily dose of doll filmed for you guys you guys voted and you want to talk about the extreme online censorship that is going on for just about i mean anybody who wants to say anything that doesn't conform to an agenda um but I'm going to be trying to get my butt in gear this week, get myself out of this anxiety and depression funk and do better. And I know that with your guys' love and support, all things are possible because you are my doll fam and I love you. Remember that you can support my content even more and become an official doll fam squad subscriber by subscribing over on my Facebook page and help give back into the doll fam even more than you guys already do. I just posted... Um, a photo set that I did that's kind of sultry on there for my subscribers only so you guys can see that um, as well as some other fun videos I try to post a lot of, of content on there before I fully release it so there's a lot of fun 
Um, but for those of you who have subscribed, thank you so much for believing in the doll fam movement and being such an active member. I love your guys' faces. Remember, these are the days that fill your week. Make them as amazing as you are. And I will see you next time. Bye.